An American collection celebrates the core of the National Academy's permanent collection. Featuring over 100 works dating from the 1820s to the 1970s, it tells a visual story of the Academy's unique identity and its contribution to the art and artistic life of this country over the course of 150 years. The first section explores the origins of the Academy, with portraits by its founder and first president, Samuel F. B. Morse. From the time of its founding in 1825 through the 1870s, the Academy's annual exhibition was the country's most significant showplace for American art, and it played a critical role in revealing and supporting the emergence of a native school of landscape painting, the Hudson River School, represented here with works by seminal artists like Asher B. Durand, Frederick Church, and John Frederick Kensett. Genre painting also developed simultaneously in the mid-19th century, highlighted here in works that touch on a variety of issues occurring during the early years of the Academy's existence, like George Henry Hall's depiction of an infamous New York City gang member, or Thomas Hicks' Civil War-inspired scene. By the late 1860s and into the 1870s, the cultural nationalism of the antebellum period seemed old-fashioned, and native landscape painting was seen as retrograde. As a result, in the years following the Civil War, American society and American art began to look outward towards Europe for inspiration. The increased popularity of study abroad, beginning in the 1870s, created new artistic foundations upon which the next generation of artists would build, represented here in several examples, including William John Whittemore's iconic portrait of Charles Courtney Curran sketching from a classical statue in the Louvre. The impact of a variety of European stylistic influences are revealed in works like George Innes's Barbizon-inspired landscape and Impressionist works by Robert Vona and Frederick Carl Friesecke and the American society portraitist Cecilia Bow. Also represented here are figure paintings that transcend the influence of contemporary European art and are uniquely American in content and attitude like William Merritt Chase's poignant depiction of a young orphan girl. The National Academy had been at the center of American art in the 19th century, but as it forged into the 20th, the institution became increasingly conservative in its views and resistant to new modern trends, like the European art movements of post-impressionism, fauvism, cubism, and futurism, and American movements like urban realism, at this time, the Academy was, instead, a bastion for Native artists, clinging to a more conservative and representational aesthetic. This reactionary attitude, coupled with a widening membership base, resulted in the formation of a geographically diverse and highly representative collection of landscapes and scenes of American life, seen here in paintings that represent the span of the country from east to west, like those by Lillian Westcott Hale and Frank Tenney Johnson. Many of the works highlight the various art colonies that sprang up around the country in the first half of the 20th century, like the New Hope School of Pennsylvania Impressionists, led by Daniel Garber, or the art community in Taos, New Mexico, represented in the work of Ernest Blumenschein. In the late 1920s and early 30s, economic depression and an increasingly conservative art press gave impetus to American scene painting, a current that was representational in style and included trends ranging from regionalism to social realism. Examples are seen here in Paul Sample's Great Depression-era depiction of unemployment lines and work by John Stuart Curry, one of the leading regionalist painters. Following World War II, American art was overcome by a tidal wave of abstract expressionism that garnered immense critical and institutional support. The Academy, however, chose once again to follow a more conservative path, remaining the champion of a traditional realist aesthetic. But despite the critical focus on abstraction after 1945, realism did remain very much alive in America. The works in this last section provide a glimpse at some of the different ways in which it was realized in the post-war years, seen in the hard-edge realism of Philip Perlstein, the magic realism of Priscilla Roberts and George Tooker, and the photorealism of Richard Estes.
political and social issues were also important themes in the late 1960s and early 70s, bringing us to the end of the gallery with works by Charles White, representing the struggles and hardships of the African-American community, and May Stevens' harsh criticism of the war in Vietnam. I hope this preview has given you a glimpse into the rich history of American art and the enormously important role that the National Academy has played in it. I invite you to visit us and see the richness of an American collection for yourself.